Yeah, I'm going to be talking about this book, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna. And right here it says Outcast by Blood, Warriors by Choice, which is pretty pertinent to the story. And it's a fantasy work. It's a fantasy book, and I think it's also a good introduction if you're looking to get into fantasy books, high fantasy books. And throughout the video, I'll be talking about the book as I draw a creature um, that's pretty important, pertinent towards the end of the story where it appears. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. To start off, the main character's name is Dekka, and she lives in this world where there's this idea of the pure and the impure, the pure being the woman who bleed red blood and the women who are impure being the, they who bleed gold blood and before a certain ritual happens Deku and her entire community realizes that she is impure she bleeds gold blood and they turn against her they lock her up and horrendous things happen to her but eventually someone comes and save her and they Deku names her white hands because she doesn't know what else to call her she's never given a name and she, White Hands tells her, come with me, you'll get to train, you'll get to truly see the extent of your abilities, and you'll serve the Emperor. That's one of the only catches, she has to serve the Emperor with no questions, no question asked. And she goes with her because she doesn't see another option, what else can she do? She's stuck in this, she's either stuck in the cell for the rest of her life, which they're near immortal, so it means possibly hundreds of years, if not thousands, because they're near mortals so she decides to go with her because what else can i do and on her way there to wherever to the place where she's going to train or at least see where she's going to be assigned to they discover she's even more unnatural even for Alahi standards uh, because a person mentions britta who will turn out to be someone very close to her mentions this is that something that happened to Deka was unnatural even by their standards because how could she possibly do this how could she possibly survive this so Deka is further she has further thoughts about herself that aren't positive because why can't i be normal she wants to be normal she doesn't want to be unnatural so they get to this place and she then goes to her training camp, where it's Warsa Baru, and there she trains, and she sees the extent of her abilities, and she discovers who she is, because she finally starts to think, hey, I'm a good person, I deserve good things, and just certain things like that. And they also have training against the Death Shrieks. They're called Death Shrieks because they have shrieks that just can completely immobilize someone. Similar to hypnosis, they just stop moving, and that gives the Death Shrieks to do whatever it is they want to do, whether to eat them, to just do something, whatever it is they want to do. And the Alaki train against them to see how strong they are against them, how fast they are against them, how silent they are against them. And they train with their partners, the men who don't have that certain resistance like the Alaki do, who can resist their Shrieks for much longer than them. And... Deka realizes that there's much more going on behind the scenes than just let's kill the death shrieks. They're not, they're not, they're just, they're against society. They're killing us off and all of that. She sees that there's much more going on behind the scenes than the emperor wants them to realize. And eventually with her close knit group of friends, she's like, what's going on guys? I don't, I don't understand. And she realizes this even more when they go on a mission to kill off more death shrieks and they enter a temple that they realize is very sac sacred and she sees this creature that's like a serpent like a dragon something similar to that that's just in this water and she re she reaches in because something is compelling her something is just like take this reach to me and that is what it is shown in the video and she this is a very close companion of hers for the rest like since she got it, it's a very close companion and the other Alaki and the other people are just very intimidated because they don't know what this is, they don't know who who raised it, who created it, they're just very confused. But she, this creature, it helps her to just realize more things are going on behind the scenes and to a certain extent the Emperor is like, I don't trust you, what are you doing here? And they just much more going on behind the scenes than they realize which 
just truly unfolds towards the end of the book and it's so amazing and if you're interested in actually reading this and do end up reading it there's a movie coming out and it's a trilogy and the next book comes out next year as well so if you ever do end up reading it it's a very good book and thank you for watching it and if you want enjoy this 30 second clip time lapse of me actually drawing it out thank you for watching